our Savior. Amen? Amen. God is here in this place. Don't hold back in your worship this morning. Lift your voice, lift your hearts, lift your hands. Let's bring down this place with God's praise because he's worthy of it. Amen? Amen. Let's sing. There it is again.
Jones is in, is in this place today. Do you believe that? When he ascended into heaven, he left his Holy Spirit here for us to work in us and to lead us. And he calls us to worship him and to love him. We're going to sing about his Holy Spirit because there's nothing worth more than that living hope that comes from God. Amen.
give him the name Jesus. And that's the name that is above every name. And that's who we're here to praise this morning. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. That beautiful, wonderful, powerful name that we're here to praise. That no matter what we're going through and our deepest hurts and our brokenness, that we can call on the name of Jesus and he's there. Amen. You are the word at the beginning.
his church and that you've had a personal encounter with Jesus? Have you, have you experienced the goodness of the Lord in your life? Can you give me, make some noise in this place if that's all? We're not just singing songs here, amen? We're connecting with our creator. He's here, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. And he's here in this place. Don't hold back in your worship. Give him everything you got this morning because he gave it all for you, amen? He gave it all for us. And he would do it again and again and again. The same eyes that have seen all the darkest parts of our life has never loved us any less. Only God's unconditional love. And you're experiencing it here this morning. We're experiencing it as we worship him together. He's so good, amen? So the Bible says... Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So we're going to do that here. Let's sing this last song together. You know the words. Don't hold back, church. Don't hold back in your worship. We're just the musicians up here. We want to hear your voice and have you connect to your creator, to your God. He's here. Sing it out to him. Amen. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah. Oh, oh my soul.
ask someone who's around you before we continue. <laughs> Sit down just a minute. Uh, we are going to have lunch today. Uh, we, we're going to uh, have lunch, but we got something much more important. You know, there's there, the things that are more important than uh, than lunch. I, I know that lunch is pretty important to all of us, but uh, but but you know, God has uh, He has nourishment that we need that uh, that comes in words, and uh, you know. I know how much God loves me because it says in Scripture that whom God loves, He chastises. And I've got Russell as my sponsor, and I've got and I've got this guy right here that's fixing to give a, a little testimony. He's my sponsee, so I know how much God loves me. Here's Chuck Dixon. Hey guys, good morning. Can you you all can hear me? Obviously. So, I was driving here this morning, and all of a sudden, I noticed something was crawling on my arm. And I looked down, and it happened to be the, the smallest little caterpillar I've ever seen. Little tiny thing, is like inching along. And I just thought, you know, that's like my life. It's like, I'm this little guy, like, inching along, you know, trying to get recovery. I'm hanging in there onto somebody, onto God's arms. So, the reality is, you know, I took him off, and I set him free, but I thought, you know, that's exactly what's true. God, like, picks us up. And we're going along and we think it's us, right? We're like making it across. We're, we're heading towards the cuff of the arm and we're working hard. And that's what God does. He, he lifts us up and we think it's us. So I want to tell you a little story about power because I think we all have tremendous power. We all have tremendous things to do something. So about uh, 2001, I was hanging out with Russell. You know, I was interested. I'm a psychologist. So where I really want mental health, I want to hang out with friends, right? I want to hang out with good people that actually set me straight because... You know, because we think we've got it together, us psychologists, right? We don't know shit. Oh. And, and, and where, where, I get, where I get mental health is really hanging from my friends. Because I don't want to talk to people like me, right? You know, they'll, they'll say something like, uh, you know, when you wake up at 3 in the morning and you're having a bad day, behaviorally, you know, let it relax. No, I want to be hang out with Jesus, right? I want to hang out with Jesus. Amen. And I want to hang out with my buddies. And that's where I'm going, right? I'm gonna, that's what it's all about. So let me tell you a little story. I want to tell you a couple stories, and then I'll be done. Well, first story is about Alive Again, how to get started. So I went out with Russell. We went out to uh, celebrate recovery in California. We're hanging out. We're going to the canyon. You know, with Russell, you know, you, you think your life's hanging on the thread. And you say, you know, like he's the guru. We're like, what do I do? Russell, what do I do? And he, he says something profound, like, well, come and have lunch with me. Right? <laughs> And then you hang, you have lunch with them, and you feel better. It's like really weird. You mean, you know, it's all it's all okay, and, and you've had lunch, you know, and you feel better. So I hung out with Russell for a week, and we're, we went to celebrate recovery, and we're having a good time. And we go to the airport, and all of a sudden we're waiting to turn into return the car, and a car hits us from behind, and boom, like this. And we and you're in California, not in Miami. Miami, they shoot you like, what the hell did you do that for? Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> In California, everybody shows out the car and says, Hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? You feeling fine? Yeah, I'm feeling fine. You feel fine? Yeah, it's cool. So we pulled the car in. So I go, you know, I always say God's speaking to me all the time, like the caterpillar thing. He wanted me to let me know that God's in charge, right? So the car thing was like, God, what was that about? So I get back to Miami, and I and so we have this idea for a lab again. You know, Woody Russell, you know, the gurus, I'm hanging out with the gurus, and they have this idea of Russell of a lab again. So I went in to talk to the pastor at the time, and I go in the pastor. Well, first I'm sitting in a meeting, which was totally ridiculous. You sit, you know, when you work at a church, you spend about an hour and a half in a meeting discussing what, you know, Martha wants as a paint. You know, well, Martha thinks it should be maroon, you know, on the walls. You know, and you're, and you're going like, we could be saving people. We could be doing celebrate recovery in old color. We could be changing lives, right? So I leave, I actually just get up out of the meeting. I say, well, okay, I'm, you guys think about the pain. I get up out of the meeting, I go to the pastor's office. And I walk in there and I go, you won't believe the BS they're talking about. They're spending an hour on the pain. Let's talk about something important. Let's talk about starting a recovery program at Old Color Presbyterian. 
And you know what happens? The pastor was like getting hit by the, from behind by the car. It's like, boom! The pastor goes like, no, you can't do that in a church. We might find out there's some Presbyterians who are actually drinkers. <laughs> or sex addicts, right? You know, there might be some sinners here. And we can't do that because this is really like a country club. You haven't gotten it yet. And, and he didn't really have a heart, but he, he pretended like he didn't want anybody else to know. So, so I just said, well, actually the weirdest thing was that then he convened a meeting. It was like going to Trump's meeting. He actually brought all the pastors together against me. And he basically sort of tried to like just sort of like hotbox me like, you can't do a, a recovery program, you know, here. Because God forbid, we might find out they're alcoholics, you know, the A word. Well, I know there are a lot of A type people there, but so uh, so we went ahead and and I just and I have said to him, I said, because I'm a codependent, and you, what happens when you say no to a codependent? You all have girlfriends, wives, or husbands that are, you know, your codependents. It's like they're driving a diesel truck. It's like, baby, you don't think I'm going to stop you from drinking? And I said to him, I said I'm going to like break through this like a door. You're not going to stop us from starting this program. There's like five pastors are all like sitting there like paying attention to the top pastor like, oh, you know, what are you doing? But So I decided I wouldn't break the door down, but I just do it a quiet way. And Russell and I hung out for like six months, the two of us and Woody be there, and no one would show up. That's how Live Again started. And one or two people start coming in and then more people. And so the point of the whole story is, if you got an idea and Jesus is on your side, just do it, right? Amen. Amen. Don't, don't hold back. You guys, every one of you, you all have power. And I just want to talk about one more thing. So the power and the path, because I know i got three minutes and your gastric juices are working. You're, you know, but the greatest thing, I'm a psychologist, so your hypothalamus is actually triggered by food. So you actually remember this. So the path really is, once I got on the path, the path is, I really think the path is always carrots and sticks. Sticks on one side, when you fall off the path, you go back to whatever your addiction is, your codependence, your sex addiction, or whatever. Does it always work out? No, it's like, whack, right? You get the stick. And then you go on the carrot. What, at that moment that you realize that you're broken, what happens? Jesus comes along, right? And he picks you up. He makes you feel better. And I think you're getting a little taste of heaven at that point. You're starting to feel better. But of course, what do we do? We don't somehow like that. We just jump back on the bad side. Then whack! And then we just go back and forth between the two, right? I don't know about you. I, I struggle with things, and I'm just going back and forth half the time. And then eventually, I think as we move along our path a little bit, and it's the, really it's the books we read, it's the people we hang out, it's hanging with Christ, <coughs> and eventually we start feeling better, right? And I think that's what heaven is. You want to be in peace? Really stop thinking so much, right? Hang out with your buddies, your, your sober buddies, right? Or your non-codependent friends. Fox start hanging out at church. Stop thinking as much, right? And you'll feel better, right? That's really what I have to say. Hang out with Jesus. Thanks, Woody. Hi. It's... Yes, yes, we will. Okay, all right, guys. Uh, for those of you, uh, those of you who don't know, uh, two years ago I had a massive stroke. I'm not supposed to be here, according to the uh, doctors. Uh, my uh, neurologist, present neurologist, is from India, and every time he sees me, he goes, "Oh, Doctor Rodham, you're a phenomena. You're a phenomena. I don't have many." He, he says, I don't have many success stories. He says, people that have the kind of stroke you, die, you had, they doubt me. Or if they live, they're in a wheelchair the rest of their lives. And they don't, and they die anyway. And uh, so, I'm still here. I am proof of what Paul said in uh, Philippians chapter 1. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I don't know why God left me here to deal with all you crazy people today. But he's got a reason for it. So anyway, uh, we are going to have lunch. And what you need to do is yeah. to go all the way to the very back building here. 
and there's uh, there's plenty of food back there. So go go out this door here, and we are going to bless the food. And and then you're going to go out this door and go all the way back to the very uh, very end. I'm going to ask Alan to come up here and bless the food for us. Alan, I'm a firm believer in Jesus and I suffer from Alan most of all. My symptoms are alcohol and drugs and the life that led. It's wonderful to be with you guys, man. And it's just a big blessing to be able to pray for our fellowship and our, and our food. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today, Lord. And thank you for going to the cross for our, all the blessings that you have already given us. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters here, Lord. I pray, Lord, that uh, this food will be fine to our hearts and to our stomachs so that we can listen and uh, have an open mind to listen to your word the way you want us to uh, digest that. So thank you again, Lord, for leading us, and thank you for everything you have in store for us, Lord. You are the only path to... Uh, joy and happiness and forever life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, just one other thing. Uh, I don't want you to swallow your food whole, but, uh, but don't dilly-dally when you're eating. Get on with eating and try to be back here at 1 o'clock, okay? Back here in the sanctuary at 1 o'clock. <laughs>